Hello everybody and welcome back to Gaming on Cafe. My name is Isaac and today we are starting a brand new series on the brand new Feed the Beast Horizons 2 aka Feed the Beast Horizons Daybreaker. You can find it right now on the Feed the Beast launcher if you wish to play it as well. Uh, it's right there underneath Feed the Beast Infinity and Feed the Beast Departed if you're watching this video uh, as soon as it comes out. Uh, so last night I did a quick little uh, first look video on this mod pack and there was just so much support for the pack itself. So many people saying they would love to see a series on it that I, I couldn't really not do a series at that point and i'm really excited to get into it so for those who didn't see the the first look video basically the the whole point of this mod pack is to basically like move you out of your comfort zone a little bit and have you play with mods that you usually probably have either never played with or like barely touch upon whenever you play a big mainstream mod pack like feed the beast infinity uh, resident rise 3 anything like that and it includes a lot of those lesser known or smaller mods that really no one ever plays with and i'm really excited to jump in and kind of learn some of these mods and it's see how it goes see what we see what we end up doing because we don't have any of the mainstream mods there are no thermal expansion no industrial craft 2 no farm craft nothing like that nothing big no applied energistics which uh, which is another big one that i know a lot of people uh, like to have installed in their pack but there's none of that in this and i think it's gonna be really fun we also have some really cool mods like galactic craft we have mechanism which i cannot wait to jump back in and play again we've got things like blood magic we've got things like blue power there's a ton of really cool stuff there's a kind of a ton of really cool uh, redstone flux generation mods like RF windmills, advanced generators, and stuff like that that I really can't wait to jump in and play with as well. But uh, yeah, we're going to go ahead and do that. We're going to make ourselves a crafting table. There is no tickets construct, so we can't make a crafting station. Uh, I really like this world that we've got here. I jumped straight in and just hit create new world. We're using the uh, alpha terrain generation or whatever it's called on the uh, terrain generation screen, I guess. And I think this looks really cool. It's raining already, which is not great, but we've got these big mountains uh, it's kind of surrounding us, and if I look at the uh, the mini map here real quick, you kind of see that they're all over the place. We've got these big, really cool looking mountains everywhere, and we're kind of in the middle here. Uh, I think this looks really awesome, and this pack is running absolutely fantastically. Uh, up until now, with 1.7.10 packs, I have just been getting a ton of like frame rate lag. The packs have been running really slow, but this pack seems to be running exceptionally well. Uh, I went ahead and installed Optifine, and if we look in the options menu here, we are running at the extreme 32 chunk render distance right now, which uh, is, for those who don't know, is twice as far as far is in vanilla Minecraft. So far by default goes to 16 chunks. We are currently loading in 32 chunks in all directions right now, which is absolutely insane. And we're still getting like amazing frame rate. It's still saying around 100 FPS right now, which is absolutely fantastic. So if you've got a somewhat weaker machine, you should probably still be able to run this pack. Uh, although it probably will get a bit slower the more stuff you do uh, in the world. But what I think I'm gonna do now, guys, really, is there's not much I can do, so I'm gonna grab a uh, pickaxe here. We're gonna go grab ourselves some stone. We're gonna make our normal default kind of start to Minecraft. We're gonna grab ourselves a, a stone pickaxe. We also have this really cool looking, uh, I think it's clay. And uh, let me just go ahead and turn off the weather sounds here because I am uh, really not a fan of the sound of the weather. So we're gonna head back up here. Uh, I think we could actually also go ahead and turn weather off with, uh, with Optifine. Let's have a look, details. Uh, do, 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 rain and snow off. There we go. Okay, that looks a little bit better. You can still see the little rain particles uh, on the floor there, but you can't see the rain as a whole, which which I'm a huge fan of. So, uh, yeah, we're going to make ourselves a cobblestone pickaxe, kind of go through the vanilla stuff here. Uh, I'm probably going to go away now, go do uh, just a ton of mining, get as much stuff as we can. Uh, actually, before I do, I want to talk about this tree here real quick. Uh, not this one. This is a, uh, a grown tree. A grown tea tree. What the heck? <laughs> What? <laughs> a tea sapling. Okay. Uh, I will throw that down. Uh, this tree over here intrigued me a little bit because this tree, it, you can see it's not got a Sfax texture pack, but it's uh, a magnumitious, magnumitious? Magnum something. And it's from the uh, magnumitious tools mod. Uh, so I have no idea what we can do, do with this thing. So I'm going to grab this and just see uh, if we can find out something here. If I press U, uh, we can make planks and then we can just use those. Oh, we can make airstrike conversion kits from flax beards. We can make, we can use it for fuel, obviously. We can make mechanism basic factory installers, as well as heat generators and elite factory installers. My goodness. Uh, precision sawmill. We can make sticks and sawdust for mechanism. And we've also got some uh, equivalent exchange three stuff. We, I, I have no idea what the heck we're supposed to use this wood for. But anyway, guys, what I'm going to do, I'm going to go away. I'm going to do a bunch of mining. I'll probably set up a little bit of a base uh, real quick. It'll probably just be a real simple, uh, just a wooden shack made up completely of wooden planks for now. But like I said, I'm going to go do a little bit of mining, try and get some iron. And uh, try and get some basic ingots, and I'll be back in a second. Okay, so a little while later, and we've got kind of a bit of a basic setup going right now. We have a chest, a crafting table, a furnace, a little bit of a wooden shack. We have two double doors and two pressure plates. Now, 
I have no idea what mod it is that adds this, but I want this mod in every single pack I play. Watch this. First of all, boom. Click on one pressure plate, both doors open. I love it. You can just right click, both doors open. Whatever mod that is, I want it. And also, have you seen this really cool like little animation that's going on here? It's really subtle and you usually don't see it. You usually only see the animation like that on the chests. You see how the chest usually kind of like nicely opens and closes? Doors usually just kind of flip open and close really quickly. It's a really small thing, but I think it looks really cool. Just that nice little smooth opening and closing of the door there. Really simple stuff. But what I want to get onto now is I want to get on to processing some of our ores because we do have quite a lot of them here. We also have a few new ones as well, like Galen? Gal Galeny? Or <laughs> this one as well as Tritanium? Or. Why do people give things such silly names that I can't pronounce? Anyway, all three of these look kind of cool. These two kind of look like replacements for uh, things like lead and tin. If I press use on this one, this one makes tin. This one here has some really interesting uses. It can be used to smelt it into tritanium ore. But then that tritanium ore can be used to make a patent storage as well as like titanium blocks. And I think some other stuff as well. We get batteries, machine casing, a, a superconductor magnet and a titanium wrench. I have no idea what any of this stuff is for. We've also got uh, ISO circuits and all kinds of cool stuff. I have no idea what the Matter Overdrive mod is all about, but I'm sure we'll get into it at some point. Uh, let me finish kind of dumping all this stuff here. I did go ahead and ch uh, chop down quite a few more trees as well. Uh, so we have a stack and a bit of wood, which we are going to use in just a second. Now, we also have these really cool gems from Blue Power, which, uh, for the most part, are kind of similar to the gems from Red Power, uh, with the rubies and the sapphires, but we also now have Amethyst, which, if you ask me, looks really flipping cool, and the first thing I'm going to do here, uh, because my iron pickaxe just broke, is I'm going to go ahead and go like this and make this really cool looking purple pickaxe. Look at that. I think that looks absolutely fantastic. And we're going to head down. This thing has the same, it has more durability than iron, but it has the same mining level as it. So you can mine things like diamonds, redstone, gold, etc. using this, but it has a higher durability than iron, which is pretty awesome. I'm going to grab that osmium real quick because we are going to be using a fair bit of osmium in a second because we're going to start with a teeny bit of mechanism for our ore processing. But if we go right to the end, we do have a few diamonds here and I can also hear lava a about, so we do have to kind of keep an eye out for that. Uh, oh, wow, look at this. This looks like uh, Nicolite from Tekken Classic. This is called uh, Teslatite or from Blue Power. Uh, I wonder what this is used for. Anyway, that's what I'm here for. I'm here for the diamonds. Let's do a quick check. As always, I'm going to do a little bit of a dig around to make sure we're not going to drop these diamonds directly into lava. And there's some more uh, amethyst, so we can make some more tools if we so wish. Oh, yeah. Achievement got get diamonds. I'm going to take all of these. And I'm also going to take this as well because this stuff is awesome. We can also make, you can make any tool, by the way, out of this stuff. You can make axes, shovels, all kinds of stuff. And they all work kind of in the same way. They're kind of just replacement for iron tools uh, without having to actually use iron, which is pretty nice. But anyway, I'll come back and mine the rest of this stuff probably between episodes. For now, let's head on back to the surface and, and let's get some uh, some ore doubling going as well. I also want to get up some uh, some progressive automation going, but we'll get with that in, in just a second here. And this is like the longest staircase in the world. Uh, another thing I'll probably do in the what I usually do with my mine shafts is I'll probably put some cobblestone stairs down, uh, going all the way down here so that we can actually like run up and down really quickly without having to jump all the way there and back because now we do have an absolute butt ton of cobblestone as well, which is pretty nice. We'll go ahead and uh, middle mouse click, by the way. Oh, I think R works as well uh, to, to organize your chests. Uh, no, middle mouse click. Oh, you can click this button up here. Uh, that's inventory tweaks there. But let's go ahead and type in mechanism. Mechanism. And mechanism, for those who don't know, it's never been included in a Feed the Beast mod pack before. It's kind of like... It's kind of like thermal expansion in IC2. It adds some ore processing. It adds things like some cool stuff like jetpacks. It adds some really cool machines, uh, lasers, tanks, loads of cool stuff that we're going to get into. But the first thing that we're going to make is the enrichment chamber and this guy down here, the energized smelter. They look kind of similar, so you'd have to kind of hover over to find out what they are. But this is basically a pulverizer is the enrichment chamber. Uh, it's made using four redstone, two iron, so I should probably get some iron uh, smelting up here. We actually don't have that much iron, which is a little bit worrisome. We do have five there, and I think all we're going to need is maybe eight. Maybe I'm going to put all of this in here. Uh, that does mean we're not going to get to double our iron, but I think we're going to need maybe even a little bit more than what we have. So uh, we'll have to watch out for that in a second. But 
This is made for redstone, two iron, two basic control circuits, and a steel casing, which is made using steel and some osmium. Now, the, this guy here, these basic control circuits, are made in what's known as a metallurgic infuser, which takes redstone and osmium and turns it into a basic control circuit. This thing is also used to make the mechanism steel, and I'm going to wait because there are quite a few steels here. Uh, this one here is made, the mechanism steel is made by smelting steel dust, which is made in a metallurgic infuser with either some coal or charcoal and some enriched iron, which is made by putting iron in a metallurgic infuser with some charcoal. So, bit of a lengthy process, but we're going to start by making a metallurgic infuser. This guy over here. And also, the, the machines for mechanism have some really cool looking, like, um, shapes, I guess. is the, the really cool looking blocks. <laughs> they look really cool, is basically what I'm trying to say here. Uh, we are going to need some osmium real quick, so let's grab a few of those already in my inventory. Let's go with ooh, seven for now. I'm going to start with seven. We'll see how that goes. I should probably make uh, a few more furnaces here. I'm actually going to make two more. Uh, I may even make a third or I guess a fourth. One of them I'm going to dedicate to making a stack of stone. And you'll kind of see why that is in a second. And the other one we are going to continue with our iron smelting there. And I'm actually going to go ahead and make a fourth one here. Because I want my mecha I want my uh, my mechanism faster. I want my osmium faster. Is is what I meant to say there. Let's stick you, I guess, there for now. Uh, this is only a temporary base, by the way, guys. We're not going to be uh, staying in this little shack forever. But for now, it will do just fine. Let's get you over there. And once we've got that, we're going to need two more furnaces to uh, to make ourselves the metallurgic infuser, as well as a little bit of iron. And that's about it. Iron, redstone, boom, metallurgic infuser. Nice. So. I think for now, we'll kind of stick this down here. And look at this. I told you it looked cool. So this is a metallurgic infuser. It does require redstone flux. So we are going to have to power this thing. Now, one of the mods that we do have in here is extra utilities. So the first thing that I'm going to make is uh, an extra utilities generator. Now, we're probably not going to use too many of these throughout the series. We'll probably use a few of them because they are quite interesting. But we won't be using like the survivalist generator all the way through or the furnace generator. And uh, these kind of default generators that burn coal. We'll try and mix it up and use some of these cool like solar panels or uh, things from advanced generators. But for now, to start with i'm gonna make a basic do i want to make a survivalist or a furnace the survivalist is cheaper but produces less power but is more fuel efficient the furnace generator makes more power quicker but is more expensive it uses a lot of iron we'll start with this guy we'll start with the survivalist generator it's just a piston two iron a furnace two redstone and some cobblestone so basically all the stuff we kind of already have uh you guys are either out of fuel uh, or out of stuff to smell actually is what you're actually out of uh, but i'll take all of those and let's see what we can do here. So we are going to need some wood to make that piston. Thank you. We've got some redstone. We've got some iron. We've got some osmium. I think we're pretty much good to go. Let's see. Boom. We'll take you. Boom. We'll take a furnace. Shift right click, by the way, to uh, to get... I'll shift... Yeah, shift right click if you want to get... No, shift left click. I always got that wrong. Uh, shift left click on this question mark. It brings all the stuff out of your inventory into the crafting table to make things really easy to craft up. But we'll go ahead and we'll stick that down like that. And I think that should go ahead. And if we put things like wood in there, it should go ahead, start making some redstone flux and sending it through into here. If I go ahead and press O, get rid of uh, uh, any eye there, you can see it's going up. We've got 1.9, almost 2 kilojoules worth of power there. It does convert it into its own thing there. But mechanism does accept redstone flux. Uh, so this thing's getting power. Very nice indeed. Now, the next machine that we're going to make is, of course, uh, if we go back to mechanism, basically the pulverizer and that is this guy up here the enrichment chamber which is made using these two basic control circuits so we need some redstone and some osmium and i believe it's one redstone and one osmium gets us one of the circuits so i'm gonna go ahead and put another redstone and another osmium in because we do need two actually i'm just gonna go ahead and do all four because we need two of uh wow that's a loud machine we need two of those basic circuits for the smelter as well however for that we are also gonna need some glass so Let's make ourselves a real cool looking uh, purple shovel real quick and go see if we can find ourselves some uh, some sand because in fact we don't have any and in order to get glass we do some sand where oh jeez we should probably also make a cool looking purple sword but I'm going to go away, guys. I'm going to find some sand. I'm going to smelt it up, and I'll be back in a second. Okay, so it turns out glass is, like, extremely hard to come by on this map. If I go ahead and show you on the wind map here, I kind of went this way and ended up having to walk all the way around and back this way. We found a pretty cool village over here, but then the only sand I found was right over here in this little section, and I couldn't find any more. There is some down here, I think, and some over there, but it's quite far away from where we are anyway. 
this thing is now done. We now have four basic controllers. I also managed to take an, almost a stack of potatoes from that village, so I guess we got some good out of it. Uh, let's go ahead and start smelting up a bit of glass. And whilst that's doing that, we should now be able to make ourselves almost one of these. We do need some of this steel, so we're going to have to throw some iron in here as well as some coal. So let's not use all of our coal just yet. Let's replace that with some wood. And then let's grab... Do we have any iron? We have six. Ooh, oh, we might have to go get some more iron here, guys. Uh, so I think I just put four in there. Yeah, 40 carbon here. And if we go ahead and throw four iron in, that should go ahead and get us four of these... Uh, it should get us four enriched iron, this stuff here, which then we can combine with four more coal to get the steel dust, which we can then smelt to get the four uh, steel for this. But then we are going to need four more steel to go ahead and get the energized smelter for this guy here. So what I'm going to do, guys, whilst we wait for all of this to smelt up, I'm going to take these real quick because we are a little bit hungry, is that I'm going to go away again. I'm going to go mining. I'm going to get some more iron, hopefully. We're going to wait for these to finish. I'm going to try and get eight. Actually, I might as well wait here right now. I'll put one, two, three, four more of those in. Uh, and then once this is done, any second now, we can put that back in there. And that's going to get us the steel dust. But I'm going to go get some more iron. I'm going to do that uh, until we have eight in eight steels worth of steel dust. I'll be back in a second. And a little while later, we now have quite a bit more steel being made. I'm going to start smelting this up over here. Now, we have three there. We've almost got four. So we can probably start to make our, this guy over here, the purification chamber. It bugs me a little bit that depending what interface you're looking at, these items move around. Like the purification chamber is here on this one. And if I look in a furnace, it kind of moves up a little bit. And then if I look in here, it's kind of like up here. So it's up there somewhere, the enrichment chamber. It's It's weird. But hey, it's fine. So we'll take all of this stuff here. This stuff is actually almost done. I made a little bit more than we needed. I actually made 10 as opposed to the 8 that we need for the two machines. And you'll see why I did that as well uh, in just a second. But to start with, we need this guy. Uh, let's go ahead and make one of those and get ourselves... What are we missing here? We are missing... Oh, we're missing even more iron. Oh, what the heck? What the heck? We've got we've got one piece of iron. I need another one table. Ah, oh, okay. Well, uh, this is going to be a good chance to show off this really weird mine that I found down here. So, uh, you usually find iron at higher levels than, like, level 12, where I usually look for diamonds. So, I kind of started up here at Y level 45. I found this really weird vein of element, an essential craft three that gave me these elemental gems. Now, they're really easy to mine, and I have no idea what they do, but they're kind of interesting. I also found this little cave, which contained a bunch of mobs and stuff. So I guess, again, I'm going to go away and try and find some more iron here. Hopefully, there is just a little bit. Oh, look at this. Here we go. Here we go. We only need two. We do now have two, but we are, of course, going to need two for the next set as well. So let's really quickly see if we can just find, like, one or two more around here. I do need to come back between episodes and get, like, everything here because there was just a ton of stuff to mine. I've also seen quite a bit of clay out and about as well, which is pretty weird. You usually don't see clay just chilling out in mines. So I guess that's kind of good. I mean, clay is usually quite useful. So, oh, gosh, get out of here. Get out of here. All right. Any iron? Any any iron? There should be some iron around here somewhere. That is zinc, I think. And this is iron. All right, let's take this. And then let's head back up. This should be more than enough. Actually, there's quite a nice amount here. And you were not invited to the party, my friend. And neither were you. Oh, you brought your friends. Okay. You brought everybody. Oh, there's a spawner. That's why. Okay. I mean, I guess that's actually kind of cool. I'll come back to the... Oh, my goodness. Get out of here. Jeez. Okay. Okay, that is cool. We found a zombie spawner. That should make getting unlimited zombie drops fairly nice. We could set up a little spawner. It's not too far away from our base either, so we could probably use that to our advantage. We don't have uh, Jabba installed, the uh, Just Another Better Barrel Attempt mod, which uh, which would have allowed us to move that, uh, that spawner, but that's fine. We could probably work with it where it is. Uh, let's see. Is this the way out? It is. Let's head on back up. We should now be able to make that enrichment chamber. And also, the reason why I made some extra steel is because we need to get some power conduits going if we want to be able to power multiple machines. Because, of course, we have the one survival generator. And I don't really want to have to make a single survival generator for every single machine that we have. So instead, what we're going to do is we're going to make some mechanism cables. So let's take this. I don't want to get rid of my... Oh, my goodness. Where the heck did you come from? Get out of here. 
There we go. Let's get this iron smelting up so we can go ahead and make some stuff. Let's get rid of some of the junk in our inventory right now because we've got so... Okay, so just as I was saying how good this pack is and how well it runs, uh, we had a crash, uh, so we did lose a little bit of video there. But basically, what I did is I made these little cables down here, these basic universal cables, which I made using two steel and one redstone, which is why I went ahead and made that extra two uh, steel instead of the eight that we needed for the machine. So we can go ahead and power them all using this little survivalist generator, uh, which I should probably... Oh, actually, still got power in it. You see, this thing... It does a really good job at making sure that the uh, your fuel lasts a long time. So that should last us quite a while. Uh, this thing is getting power, which is kind of awesome. And now what we can do is we can take things like our iron, stick them in here. And it is, again, a very loud machine. But it's going to go ahead and it's going to turn one iron into... By the way, we can speed these up in the future. We can go ahead and uh, insert upgrades, like speed upgrades and efficiency upgrade. It turns one iron ore into two iron dust, which we can then, of course, go ahead and smelt up into two iron ingots, which is pretty nice. And this is effectively our ore doubling process. Now, the last little piece of the puzzle here is, of course, to have the automatic smelting using our little mechanism machines over here. So we're going to go ahead and make ourselves an energized smelter, which requires the rest of that steel. Uh, to make ourselves this little steel block like so. And then I think we should be able to do something like this. Nice. We're going to stick that down like here. That's going to get power as well from our little survivalist generator. And now all we need to do is we need to go into configuration uh, up here on the top left. Side config. On the top right, turn auto eject on. Make sure this side here is set to blue. Over on this one, go to the same place. Make sure this left side is red, because red is the color of the input slot there. And now, anything that is put in here, for instance, let's see, what ores do we have? Let's grab some gold. If we were to put a gold in here, it should go ahead, process that up into two gold dust. That two gold dust should then get automatically ejected into the next machine, which should take it into this slot here. And then, if we were to do something like grab a little bit of a chest... And this makes the most horrible noise ever. I am going to turn block sounds right down. Uh, I think that's what it, that does. But that's going to go ahead and you see it automatically worked. It's going in there. If we stick a chest down there, again, turn auto eject on. When this is finished, and this one seems to be taking even longer than the last one, but I think that's due to the fact that it doesn't have much power, due to the fact that this thing produces a very, very small amount, like, I think it's something ridiculous, like 20, maybe 5 hour for tick, like really small amounts. Uh, and as you can see, this thing doesn't have much power at all. But... It should, any second now, finish up and start processing this through. Almost there. Boom. And voila. So now we are very, very close to a fully automated system. The last thing that I'm going to do here before we wrap up today's episode is I'm going to make a chest. I'm then going to go ahead and make another chest. And the reason for that is because I'm going to make a hopper. Like so. And then all we're going to do is we're going to go, boom, shift right click on that. Stick a chest down on top of that hopper, like so. Then all we got to do is stick all of our ores into that hopper. So let's go ahead and grab all these ores. I don't know if they're all... We can use all of them. I don't know if these ones from ET Resources will work. So for now, I'm just going to put in the uh, Thermal th Foundation and Mechanism ones. I think the Blue Power one probably will work. But for now, uh, I'll probably test those off camera. That is pretty much all of them. I will take these and throw those in there as well. The ones from the Aluminium from Galacticraft. And this is a fully automated ore doubling system. All of our ores we can now just dump into this chest. They will automatically go through, get doubled, sent into here, get smelted, sent into here. And we will have all of our ingots. And that is absolutely fantastic. And yeah, I think I'm going to end today's episode there. We'll probably come back next episode and try and start working towards a better power source system. There's also a few more things I want to do with progressive automation that I didn't quite get to do this episode. Because we did just a bunch of other stuff. And uh, that was a little bit of a weird glitch there. But for now, guys, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the first episode of the brand new Feed the Beast Horizons Daybreakers, be sure to hit that like button tell me down in the comment section what you think of the mod pack if you played it already and i will see you guys next time